Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today I will be doing a quick tutorial on how to double track some snare drums. So when you're double tracking snare drums you want to make sure that the two, the two snare drums that you're using are going to complement each other. In the example I'm, that I'm going to be showing you I will be using a a slightly lower, deeper sounding one and one that more that sounds a bit more whip-like and got more of a crack to it. The main snare drum that I'll be using is the Pearl ELX which I use when I'm recording the rest of the kit. So you have, you'll have the SM57 on the snare drum plus an overhead uh, getting like capturing a bit more of the full sound. Got an Evans Genera head on top which uh, I really like. Uh, I haven't tried them before. I bought it recently because I, I needed a new head. <laughs> and yeah, I think it sounds great. It's one of the only snare heads that I've used that I, I don't think needs an O ring really. And it's mostly because it's got like a second, it's almost got its own O ring on the on the underneath. You probably won't be able to tell if I hold up the camera, but it's, you can you can just kind of make out but it's like slightly thicker on the edges. So it's almost acts as, as, as its own O-ring. On the bottom, you've got, uh, I've got the bottom head pretty tight, almost like as tight as I'm willing to do it. I think all snare drums really should uh, be as tight as possible on the bottom. The auxiliary snare that I'll be using is the Yamaha Stage Custom, which has a lovely Evans EC reverse dot level 360 head on top. It's got a lovely pinstripe around the edge and a dot that you can't see anymore because I've battered the crap out of the middle. At the bottom, that's an Evans Snare Side 300, level 360. Uh, but that's that's pretty tight as well, just as tight as the Pearly Alexis. The top head is not quite as tight. And also this, uh, this drum as a whole just sounds uh, deeper, I feel, and Ted also goes a long way into giving it that a deeper, larger sound because we're going to be recording this snare drum by itself so I will whack an o-ring on top of it. I will have an SM57 going on the top and I'm going to test out a few different microphones but I think ultimately I'm going to end up using the Behringer XM8500. Uh, in terms of post-production for the snare drums, really you just want to chuck a gate on it, maybe some reverb if you if you feel like it. And you can EQ them as well to like try and block out certain frequencies that you only want to hear from from one snare drum. Like with my Yamaha I might uh, try and try and block out some of the high frequencies and with the Pearl I might try and block out some of the low ones so they don't clash with each other. But yeah you don't need to go crazy. You shouldn't have to EQ snare drums too much or any drums really for that matter. Here's what the Pearl sounds like by itself. Here's what the Yamaha sounds like by itself. And here's what they sound like together. Thank you so much for watching guys, if you enjoyed the video please like, comment, subscribe, go follow my social medias, links are down in the description, and I'll see you next time.